I'm still sweating daiquiris. I had so many on Cocoa Beach. I mean, just first of all, I didn't know that you could just like a lot of the places, a lot of the bars down here. I don't know. I think South Beach are probably still allowed, but I don't even know. Can you walk out of Wet Willies with your with your daiquiri? Um, man, you could walk around like Vegas with a daiquiri flume in Cocoa Beach, and it's uh, wow. I mean, they they are delicious, and 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 floaters galore, dude. That's what you could do. So. It is uh it is great to be back with everybody here and uh celebrating the Canes to start off today's show. They uh, they upheld the honor as this is a basketball town with the Canes getting to the final four with FAU getting to the final four both heading to Houston. And now you're like, "Oh, this weekend could be perfect." Cuz it was supposed to be I, I got to tell you, I was really disappointed with Saturday night. And the Heat's effort in that second half, which could only be described as piss poor. Yeah. Because you have this beautiful night. Yep. UD night. Mm -hmm. And I went to practice the day before. I was boots on the ground. And I'm chopping it up with Spo and 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 Bam on a bio about UD. I come in goosed up, dude. I'm thinking this is going to be a great night of honor with UD weekend, right? You got him there. That unveil- Did you see the Section 305 that they wow, put together? Wow, that was so nice. Wow. And I, I mean, appreciate that it's up there. You know, it's not the rich people or whatever. It's like like UD, someone who's probably just a real passionate fan, scrapping and starting from the bottom. It was a beautiful section. It was a beautiful section. They have all these murals up there. Oh, yeah. They gave everybody there a jersey for wow, UD night. What not a that? t-shirt. Yeah. Everybody in that section got a UD jersey. I mean, yeah. they just did everything top notch. That was so great. But you want to know something? Yeah. You can only make the horses go so far because yep. in that second half, Oof. the horse went out on the track, yeah. took a big poop. He did. It was the turdiest of turd quarters yeah. I have ever seen. And I've seen some turds in my day. Yep. But that third quarter that the, he put up against the Brooklyn Nets, wow. That was. And here's the thing that makes it even more frustrating because been a lot of candidates for worst loss of the season this year pistons losses all those hornets losses uh you know the spurs there's been some frustrating ones i would say my 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 the most angry old tobes has been at a loss this year magic in overtime was the yeah. most furious i would because sure. jimmy butler he carried the team i was furious at that loss yeah that's fair and then this one I just found to be the most disgraceful because, and you may say, oh, aren't they the same? No, nah, they're not the same thing. I was just like, like th- th- this, and uh, you shouldn't be surprised. I-, I know I'm not going to sit here and say I should be surprised, even though I do feel like the Heat, I feel like they've been playing better. Yeah, I thought they turned I the corner. I feel like they've been playing better, even though they've been 500 since the All-Star break. Same Z's. Yep. The, I felt like things were going in the right direction. And... You have this game against Brooklyn. You are right ahead of them in the standings. You have to win this game. And by the by, they have been stinking up the joint. I mean, they have been losing willy-nilly. They have been ready to pack it in. And so you get to the second half. All right. He were playing a little free and easy. Okay. And a lot of offense. Max Struess. Lighten it up like a Christmas tree in that first half. And this second half was so disgraceful, so disgusting to see what happened to them roll over like they did against the Brooklyn Nets. You just, you left, I I was left speechless after it, Marcos. It wasn't even one of those where I was angry. It wasn't even one where I was sad. I was just, I was just like on UD night. You all should hold your head in shame. Yeah. In shame. And you should all walk to that locker room. You should apologize to you, Donis Haslam, for what you guys did to ruin his night like that. I haven't been that deflated on like a ceremony night since the ring, the, the ring night after the 06 championship. It was like, hey, this is supposed to be a big night. Udonis Haslam, it's his weekend. Let's honor him. You got a team coming in. You're fighting. You're vying for a playoff spot. We can stay out of the plan give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room and to put forth that effort against the Brooklyn Nets who are ready to pack it in. They lost yesterday to the magic. Thank God. But 
What are you doing, boys? What, 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 what? Yeah. What is this? What, what kind of effort is that on, on Udonis Haslam night? Didn't they go up at the half, too? No, they were kicking ass. They were kicking. I mean, like, look, they should have had a bigger lead at the half. Yeah. But you're like, all right, come on. What's going to happen in the second half? You think you think that this is going to all? Uh, yup. Apparently so. Apparently we're going to have the worst third quarter known to man. Dade South says the roadrunner got you again. While he coyote. I know. I fall for it every time. Every time. I think that they're back. And I think that they're here. They throw one of these up there. I don't know why. This isn't your fault, though. I'll give you credit on this one. They looked like they were playing better. They look. It looked like everything was coming together. You know, yeah. it was the offense was playing. Now I know, like people were like, "Well, the defense hasn't really been quite as." You know, me, me, me. All right, but <laughs> okay, they felt like it felt to me like things were kind of coming together. And to put that, I would all right lose it. The lose it shows some 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 back and forth, but just to die like that in the second half on. You done as Haslam night to to have that little effort, that little fight for for the for the captain was so upsetting, so upsetting to see that. But why can I? I shouldn't be surprised. I shouldn't be because every time you do think they have it figured out or something comes together, they just remind you. Hold on. We might have something a little bit disappointing around the corner. And that is what's discouraging about it. Because you got it this week, and I'm, ta- I'm doing it again. Because I'm like, yeah, look at this week. Got the, the Raptors just beat the Knicks, you know, on what was. And that, that was the only regret I had of not being here last week. I really wanted to celebrate that Knicks win on the air. Yeah. Because that looked like a lot of fun the next day. Yeah. Because I hate the Knicks. And Julius Randle got the business from oh. Jimmy Butler. You know, making Let, fun of him. Let's not. D Wade the, was there, of course. It was Goosey's on top of Goosey's, you know. But just when you think the goose giveth, the Goosey's can be taken away, and that's what happened. I had, I had, I had, you know, I had GD yesterday. Flaccid Goosey's. I came in, revved up, ready to celebrate a weekend, ready to put our stamp. On being out of the plan and that, which look, thank you to the magic for taking care of business yesterday against the Nets. Very lovely of you. Appreciate that. That's the thing that's frustrating about it. They go out there, they get the doors blown off them by the magic, and you you allowed that to happen. That just uh. didn't they go undefeated uh against us all season? And like two of those games, if not all of them, were without KD. Um, I think they beat them once this season. Maybe I'm wrong. Gross, though. But yeah, I know what you're saying. It's a, it's a gross. And Mikel feeling. Bridges looks like the greatest basketball oh, player yeah. on earth against Brooklyn us. Bridges is back every everywhere. time that they, that they're like, oh, I don't know about the. Ew, it sucks yeah. we trade Kitty, but then the, the Brooklyn Bridges gets. They dude, they were losing five in a row. They just they just uh, shut down Ben Simmons for the season. Yeah, like it should have been easy pickings, and that's the problem. Is the Heat went into it, and they think it, the problem is like the Heat can't go into these games like Cobes. You can't do that. You can't be me. All right. I you, you can't go into this mentality of <laughs> steamroll these guys. No, you got to go do it. And too many times this year, they're like, ah, eh, Hornets, ah, eh, Nets, ah, eh, Spurs, ah, eh, a Bogdanovich. Every one of these times, the same thing happens. Bit in the ass. If it's a big time matchup. They usually show up. Oh, Joel and Beat sitting tonight. Ah, blown up, blown out by the Sixers. That's the thing that's been crazy about it. It's like, oh, big time matchup, down to the wire, a yep. lot of fight, big time wins, Goosey's galore. But when it's like, oh, if the guard is down a second, if they, if the Heat, here's the thing, if the Heat feel like they can jog, they'll power walk. Like that's that's they, you give them an inch. They take a mile. This team is so ready whenever you give them a little bit of relief to not go as hard as possible. And I don't know if that's because when the chips are down, they have to play as hard as possible. They're just like, wow, that was really hard. I don't want to do that all the time. But, man, and the defense since uh, the All-Star break, not great. Not great. No, 
not surprising because they brought Kevin Love in here. So the defense isn't going to be as good with Kevin Love. The shooting's been better. It's a give and take. I don't know what to make of that. You know, like there's a lot of the numbers that are out right now. Barry Jackson did a good breakdown of this with Kevin Love, Bam Adebayo, sharing the floor together. Now, Barry's a credible journalist, so I understand why people will uh, listen to him more than me. But I told you this this four okay. games in, I told you, I, are we sure Kevin Love is working? Okay. Because I don't think that <laughs> I said this from the time it happened. All right. Because we that he were getting these huge deficits. Yep. I'm like, well, okay. I know that the record hasn't been pretty, but the Heat haven't get the the snot kicked out of them like they had these first few games since having Kevin Love. And I'm telling you, my theory was the entire time. It doesn't look like it's Kevin Love's fault. He looks like he's doing his job just fine. Spreading the floor, getting his rebounds, doing the outlet pass that only he can do. I'm not simply blaming Kevin Love. A lot of these have been heat tendencies all year. But you can tell Bam's numbers were going down a little bit. You know, the rebounding hasn't quite been out there. Therefore, he doesn't get the ball to start and handle the ball and bring it up court. So, you know, the number's down across the board for Bam. So... I read this article from Barry Jackson. I was like, yeah, that's what I said four games in. But, but you know, now it's like, a, what, it's probably like a 16-game sample size, something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. since having him love. So I understand. But the point remains, I saw this four games in. I was like, I don't think this Kevin Love thing is working out quite as smooth as we think it is. Like, we thought it was going to be the perfect fit next to Bam Adebayo. And I'm just not sure that it is. And I'm not saying Kevin Love's a bum. He's been fine. And by the way, Props to him. This dude has sacrificed balls, blood, head trauma, all in the name of the Miami Heat wins. Yeah, in 16 games. That's impressive. I respect that from Kevin Love. Yeah. I, you know, it's not like I'm, I hate watching Kevin Love play for the Heat. Now, I did hose him down when he came here. <laughs> My crimes, I answered for them. You know, I, I, I said something to the effect of, is he even on the Cavaliers years ago? Those were dark ages. Those were dark times. Okay. Sure. I wasn't, I'm not that guy anymore. Okay. I'm not the guy that would just hose down Kevin Love willy nilly. But like I'm reading this stuff in Barry Jackson's column. And if you guys didn't hear, here's like a little snippet of it. Uh, he, 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 uh, he writes, Kevin Love, whose lack of foot speed was an issue on Saturday, is allowing players he's guarding to shoot 56% since joining the Heat, as compared to 50% by those players shooting overall. Adebayo is permitting an unusually high 51.2 field goal percentage since the All-Star break. Those same players shooting 49.3% overall. Uh, speaking of Adebayo, his regression of play since the All-Star break has been puzzling. He's down every statistical category, including points per game. 21.6 before the All-Star break, 18.6 after. The most glaring, though, is rebounds. 10 before, 6.9 after. It's very clear that Kevin Love is you know, snatching rebounds willy-nilly. Uh, Adebayo's reached double figures in rebounds only twice in the 15 games since the All-Star break. And on Saturday, he mustered just seven against the Nets, who pounded the Heat on the boards. Love, shooting just 29.6% on threes. Uh, the Heat have been outscored by five points with Love on the court. The starting line of a Love, Butler, Adebayo hero, Gabe Vince, has been outscored by 12 points in 214 minutes in Love's 15 games with the team. What's more, the Heat has been outscored by 17 in the 246 minutes that Love and Adebayo played together. So, Look, that's numbers. That's that, that, that like, I, I, you know, that's kind of my thing. I'm just saying Barry actually did research. I just used my eyes <laughs> yeah. and I was like, I don't think because it doesn't look bad because yeah. the offense looks a little bit better, but it also just for whatever reason, doesn't feel like it's working that great. Yep. It doesn't feel like it's working that great. It's been okay. It's been fine. But it's very noticeable the Heat aren't defending like they used to, and they get down in bigger deficits than they have all season. And now, by the by, they don't only have no backup center for Bam. They basically are throwing Kevin Love as the backup center with Haywood Highsmith because Spo is rats off a ship on Yurt. Yep. Don't know when Cody Zeller is going to be able to play with his nose. Oh, we miss him. That's I do miss him. I do miss Cody Zeller. Never yeah. thought I'd say that, but also, yes, I miss Cody where Zeller. Where the hell are you seeing him on the bench? Like, where, where's Oladipo? What, what's going on with that? Uh, do I see him on the bench? I don't feel like he's been off the bench. I saw him at practice on Friday. Where, why do we have any reason as to why? Oh, as to why he's not yeah, playing? Why is he? I just think it's a numbers game. They're playing uh, Kyle Lowry yeah. and Kyle Lowry has looked good. Yeah. Has looked good coming off the bench. And I don't really just, I don't know what the role is there for Vic. I think that's just what it is. Kyle Lowry basically uh, took his role. That's what that is. I mean, do we love Gabe or do we love him so much that we think that, 
Who gave the starter though? Like we, he's, we can't just you know see what Lowry. Just, I mean, we were playing with the lineup all I think, season. I, I don't know. Look, he may come back into the playoffs yeah. again. I don't write off Victor Oladipo, but yeah, sure. it feels for right now. It's it's eerie how similar it is to last year where they hit their worst run of the season. Yep. Then they made a rotational change, and he was out of it. And then they got to the playoffs, and you know they ended up having to rely on him again. But yeah, for right now, it looks like he's out of the rotation. And I think I read. I think it was i don't remember if it was ira or anthony so i apologize but somebody had quotes from him basically saying like you know yeah nobody talked to me about it or anything like that like he hasn't gotten like this explanation but i think he knows what it is it is what it is suppose gonna say it's high class problems um but you know just disappointed in saturday night man i was thought i was I was ready for a party a yeah. party and just somebody threw up in the pool uh in the punch bowl I didn't even say someone threw up in the pool. <laughs> I was like, that's also that too. Violation. That's just terrible. Yeah. The punch bowl, though, that's probably worse. Do, they, do people still do punch bowls? I don't think so. Nah. Probably not. Take a break. Back with more of this. Previously on Tobin and Leroy. In a lot of ways, Kevin Love is like a bra.